23. Welcome to another episode of the TNC Sports Talk YouTube channel. My name is Justin. Thank you guys for tuning in. Just getting ready here on a Monday morning. A lot going on, a lot going on. And I can't wait to get break this down, get excited, you know, get started, start talking about a lot of sports. Um, you know, how was your weekend? What did you guys do all weekend? You guys what type of games did you guys watch? You know. Let's first of all, let's take a, just a deep breath in. You know, new week, waking up early in the morning, 6.03 in the morning, as we begin our program for the day, for the week, and it's always going to be a rough, you know, rough start to the week. So hopefully we could just bypass that. There's going to be a lot of NFL talk, a lot of maybe wrestling talk, because Friday, there was a lot of news that came out in the wrestling world, especially in WWE, and that we're going to have to address at some point. So we will be addressing those matters mainly today and moving forward because we got to establish ourselves in, in that field and what's going on, address what's going on, and let's go ahead and uh, move forward with that. But let's take a breath, okay, because... We'll start you back off on Saturday when, you know, you get the, you know, you we're receiving good news. Last week, I will be honest with you, especially covering sports in the Cincinnati area, there were, all right, a lot of things that came to a halt. It was, there was actually a lot of sports subjects that was difficult to address and to talk about, to move forward without having to reliterate and rebring up Monday night football, Bills, Bengals, DeMar Hamlin, and all that stuff. And throughout the week, it was, you know, I don't know, maybe it was just me. And I know that, you know, news coverage everywhere, you know, DeMar Hamlin was on the news. Every station, whether it was regular news, whether it was weather news, whether it was sports news, whether it was just regular television, there were sport, you know, always coverage. And like I said, I don't know if that was just because we're in this area. I don't know if that's because, you know, because Baltimore did that stuff, but they had the coverage everywhere. And so I felt as if it was maybe a bit difficult last week to go throughout the week you know, trying to move forward because, you know, unfortunately, although a tragedy happened and, you know, an event happened on Monday night that we can't take back, that kind of wrapped up a really good weekend of sports, the world doesn't come to an end. And the sports world, the NFL this past weekend showed exactly just that. So when you when you finally start getting some good news and you start saying all right so over the weekend he you know the you know he wakes up and um you know he starts communicating with medical staff and his family and then next thing you know you you realize now he's you know he's, he's doing a hundred percent better and it's kind of like just a relief just a relief man. so you soak it on in you take a deep breath in and now you can breathe and now you can kind of just reset your 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 clocks move forward and you know for the for a lot of people it's gonna be like well this never happened well <laughs> you know we, we we gotta live somehow and not forget about this and it's a learning because it does it didn't just affect a single person it affected you know not one but two franchises and it affected fans not from one franchises but two franchises and then who knows the amount of people 
that it affected around the world in the sport itself. So, you know, we really want to just quickly come out here, kind of give you guys, you know, and, you know, and, and honestly appreciate, take the moment to appreciate, um, you know, UC Health medical staff who was working around the clock, the, um, the staff members at the stadium who was working around the clock. And then on top of that, um, you know, just everyone in between that was in full support. You know, I know at every event when it comes down to football, baseball, wrestling, basketball, there's always medical staff personnel. But I don't think anyone comes in expecting to give CPR to anybody. You know, I remember working at a hospital as a security you know, guard myself. And yes, you get trained for all that good stuff in the event that you have to have it actually do, you know, apply it. But you never really think that as a security guard that you actually have to, would have to apply it. I had had a colleague of mine a couple of years back when I was doing security uh, at a hospital who, you know, responded to a call into a garage. And, you know, we, you know, our, you know, there's protocols. Uh, where, you know, he had to start applying CPR to this uh, elderly man um, in the garage. And it was um, a lot of times to be able to act on that instinct of knowing exactly what to do, how to do it under pressure. You think of you doing it in front of thousands of people because not only the, the thousands of people watching at the stadium, but the thousands of people watching at home because you know, that everyone is glued to the television. Um, so, you know, I don't think there's enough credit that is given to them. So take a moment. Thank you, guys. Uh, thank everyone uh, in that situation uh, who's been able to react and take the proper notice and care uh, for DeMar Hamlin. You know, it looks like he's doing great. And we'll get more into that a little bit in our program because, Trust me, there's probably there is a little bit more to talk about, regardless if it did seem that way or not. But the weekend began. I kind of want to just kind of pick the brains and see how everyone's weekend unfolded. Um, you know, I kind of got a chance yesterday to kind of sit back and unwind and actually reflect over the last two weeks because it's been hectic because other than being a sports fan going you know going home and watching these games to also and then transitioning your brain into covering these sports um throughout the week it could kind of you know it kind of piles on a little bit so i got a chance to kind of reflect a little bit yesterday during football i actually was sitting down and watching the cowboys and the you know commanders and we'll get into that, but I was watching the football game yesterday. I was reflecting about, okay, well, everything that's transpired over that, you know, this past weekend in football alone, all the stipulations, all the sports hours going on, all the games that were being played, and then compare that to what New Year's Eve was. Because despite Monday night football, you know, you had college football playoffs uh, implications going on. You had, uh, you had some major implications in week 17 of the NFL. And then bringing you back towards, you know, back towards Friday uh, to SmackDown and, and Thursday Night Football. And I, I will honestly say maybe, you know, the New Year's Eve weekend was kind of overwhelming for me. There was a lot of things going on. Uh, it, it had you in for a twist and turns and loops uh, around. Um, if you didn't understand, um, you know, there was probably plenty, a fair share of games. You take it to this week when there was, you know, there's still plenty, a fair share of implications, but I think that everything's kind of mellowed out, right? Um, for me, and uh, you know, as a sports fan, I love the amount of sports, bring it all on. But I feel like sometimes when you bring a little bit too much, it could get overwhelming and more complex than what it has to be. And at the end of the day, you want to enjoy um, these these games and these pro, you know, and these uh, events. So 
you know, I, I kind of felt after reflecting yesterday that this weekend was kind of more mellowed out. You knew everything, but it wasn't hitting you too hard. It wasn't uh, being too aggressive uh, for you. And I really, if I had to ask, if I haven't, if I had been, to, you know, asked, hey, which weekend really you did you really enjoy compared from yesterday, you know, last weekend to this weekend, I, I would have probably be going more towards this weekend. As we are taking our you know breath, time is just flying so fast. We're already over ten minutes into our program, and we're just getting warmed up here on a, on a Monday morning. You know, there's a you know playoffs. NFL playoffs are officially set and underway uh, for next weekend. There will be six games played next weekend uh, throughout Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. I'm excited. Um, you know, like you said, well, let's, let's search you back off of Saturday. You know, we got a chance to, you know, watch, um, you know, I tuned in bits and pieces uh, to the Jaguars and Titans game uh, on Saturday. And, you know, I was, I was watching and I was thinking to myself at halftime, you know, Tennessee was up and I'm like, oh, well, you know, it, it shows to you th- that teams can do it you know, that the good teams can do it under pressure. Um, and, you know, the tie-ins, you know, they they decided to put their faith in their hands by um, resting their starters in week 17 against the Cowboys. I don't know if it was the extra time that was required by, uh, you know, that was given to them because they played a Thursday night football that maybe it got to them, but t- Jacksonville stepped up to the plate. They were able to come back and, um, you know, Listen, I, I love it. You know, they clinched the AFC South on yes on Saturday night, which was fine because it was the winners. You know, the winner would clinch, and you know, yeah, the Jaguars had a slim chance. Um, you know, under stipulations that certain things happen, and there had to be a lot of certain things that happened in order for the um, J- Jaguars to reach a wild card spot. And it didn't happen, unfortunately. Uh, but you know, it's okay. They didn't need that. They took a, they took um, matters in their own hand, and they went in uh, Saturday night and they walked out as AFC South, you know, division champ, tied division champions. What I loved so much about that is that, okay, let's be let's be honest because that was a playoff game. It was a playoff atmosphere. Uh, every snap counted, and you kind of, you know, we talked about having a taste to what the playoffs were. Well, we started it last week in college football playoffs. Now we uh, unfold until this week. Monday, last Monday night was, you know, for the par- portion that the game was being played between the Bills and Bengals was a playoff atmosphere. It rolled over until Saturday night, Jaguars in Tennessee. And then, you know, you got a, you got yourself a nice, you know, little small preview where, you, you know, this was the only game. And it lived up to his standards, you know, maybe, you know, and now it, then it rolled over into Sunday where you had certain, you know, implications of everything, you know, of teams winning, you know, you had a couple of divisions still needing yet to be determined, a uh, home field advantage, number one seeds, um, and then wild card spots, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but it turned into a really, really well weekend. Um, Jaguars uh, clinch the AFC South. They get a chance to now take a step back. Back they will be facing the Los Angeles Chargers um, in the wild card game next weekend. And I'll get to you the schedule a little later on in our program. Um, but fourteen teams are now talking about playing forward. Um, you know, we got a chance to uh, tune into bits and pieces, and especially at the end of last night's. Lions and Packers game and you know the Lions you know although they were not capable uh because you know listen it wasn't the Lions fault they they had no ruling in the outcome of you know everything that happened um of their postseason faith it was primarily because of Seattle winning and beating the Rams um earlier yesterday 19 to 16 but you know listen it is you know, it's Seattle. Well, you know, it's you be able to sabotage someone's postseason. I think it's exciting. Um, 
you know, we're talking about, you know, there are two different teams in week 18. Week 17, week 18, there are two type of different teams. There are teams that are looking to go into the postseason and they're trying to finish their, you know, and place themselves accordingly, whether that's winning a championship, whether that is, you know, getting a wild card spot, resting their players to get their players healthy. There are, you know, those group of teams that are trying to play for January football. Then there's there's the other side of type of teams that especially in week 18 that you see, they're going to rest their starters because they're, they're you know checked out of the season. They're working on 2023. They're going to maybe work on the NFL draft. And you're going to see two different type of, you know, styles of football. And that's what we saw throughout the entire week. I'm excited. We're going to start breaking a lot of that stuff down, trying to take you the ins and outs already coaching news is, you know, what's going to happen with, you know, Sean McVay over in Los Angeles. Where is Sean Payne going up? I know he's currently talking to um, the Denver Broncos in this hand. Um, you know, there's a, could Jim Hallball, uh come back up to the NFL? And if so, what team could you see Jim um, advance to as well? We'll get some local sports coverage here as college basketball unfolded. We'll talk more about the Cincinnati Bengals and the Baltimore Ravens. Um, in that game, and we'll get you guys ready for TCU in Georgia tonight, um, National Football Championship. Like I said, it's now we're going to officially leave last week behind us. Starting tonight is the stepping stone, is the preview of how this weekend should start bringing out. And like I said, if you're just a sports fan, this is something exciting, something um you know, it's a good time to be a sports fan and stuff going around in the wrestling world. Also, we get ready for this weekend as hard to kill for impact um, airs on Friday night and a lot of great matches there. So we'll get you guys ready. Starting to get you guys ready for that. Uh, Monday night Raw's tonight. College of football national championships tonight. And then you got the playoffs this weekend. So uh, we'll talk about uh, some wrestling, talk about some football. Uh, we'll have a pretty good two-hour show here for today. So let's step away. Let's have a timeout. Um, and when we to return, we'll break down this uh, AFC-NFC um, playoff race as we uh, officially lock in the set as of yesterday night. Um, and we'll get you all the details here. Thank you guys for tuning in to the Throwing with Justin. That is me on the TNC Sports Talk YouTube channel. If you guys are tuning us in on Twitter, thank you guys also. Um, and don't be free, don't forget to download us um, and take us on the road via Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Spreaker, and much more. So take a uh, step aside. We'll be come right back and we'll talk more sports here on the TNC Sports Talk YouTube channel. Sometimes we act like a fool Not aware we're troublemakers Sometimes we try to be cool Not being givers, only takers All righty, 624 here on a Monday morning. Thank you guys for tuning in to the throwing right here on the TNC Sports Talk YouTube channel. You know, football season. I want to give a big shout-out before we get into football. You know, we couldn't... All our, all our program, we can't make this possible. I want to give a big, big shout-out to StreamYard Studios. It's an online streaming service um, that's provided. It's a home, proud home of the TNC Sports Talk YouTube channel. Create your podcast, YouTube's... Create your podcast, YouTubes, and host virtual business meetings. Conduct interviews over at StreamYard.com. Check out the free version today. All right, we're down here on a Monday morning. Let's get a heads right here as we adjust. Bengals and Ravens week 18. And, you know, there was some confusions and some, you know, complications heading into the game. and. 
this and that and you know what okay let's let's be honest all right i am you know we we did the show friday night um and you know we got the chance to hear that the Bengals clinched the AFC North, but reality, we didn't feel that the Bengals clinched the AFC North. I don't, I don't feel like we earned that division title because, you know, the understanding was is that you, you, you know, the understanding in the scenario was if you played the Bills Monday night and you beat the Bills. Monday night, you officially clinched the AFC North. If you lose to the Bills Monday night, you go into Sunday's game against the Ravens in a playoff atmosphere because the AFC North championship is on the line. Well, because the game was not played Monday and is at nobody's fault, when we came down into figuring out who won the championship, because the Bengals initially played one last game, consider this as a tie, they by default win the title. But it didn't feel that way under the circumstances of what happened last week. So, you know, in in a sense, you know, obviously playoff atmosphere, we're at Paycor Stadium, the, the crowd, the the energy, the vibe, was full was was very impressive i i enjoyed it i loved it um but i think the Bengals really needed this win this sunday not just because everything that unfolded last week it's not the same scenario as buffalo but we needed the win because we needed to feel like we've earned the afc championship north for a team all right for a team who lost who started the season off 0 and 2 started the season off 4 and 4 to be able to come back, win straight out, and clinch the AFC North is a statement to the rest of the division, especially to the Baltimore Ravens. So last night was a big game. But see, last night was not just a game, or yesterday game was not something that was just thrown together. All right, we didn't play the best of the Baltimore Ravens, right? John Hallbar decided that he's going to sit a lot of his starters. They've already clinched the playoffs. They already know. They don't care. See, coming into Sunday's game, there was a couple of things on the line. Because, you know, Bengals have already clinched the North. It was the Bengals clinched the North. It's just trying to play seeding. They're going to play either be second or third based on the outcome. What the Bengals needed to play for was... One, they needed a play to feel like they actually won the title. For two, they needed the win more than Baltimore because then they didn't have to worry about a coin flip to determine who they were going to play at. So, you know, and listen, there's only so many men on the roster, 53 men on the roster. You have to be able to play some sort of starters, but... Coming into yesterday's game, the Ravens knew ahead of time that, hey, I have nothing to lose. If we lose the game, win the game, you know, if we win the game, great. There is a possibility that we could play in our favor. But if we lose this game, then it's just another playoff game. We're actually going to be right back here in Cincinnati for next week's divisional game. There was more on the line for Cincinnati than Baltimore. so. You know, it was a great game. I actually got a chance for the first, I think it was like maybe probably a handful of times, but I actually got a chance to sit down and watch the game from start to finish uh, between the Ravens and the Bengals. Um, It was just great to see everyone back at it. You know, it was lights out intensity. Um, You know, I got, you know, I, I think one of the biggest reasons Lamar Jackson didn't play yesterday. Brown Jr. wasn't out there and, you know, he did all right. I think the main concern of, out of Baltimore right now was those receivers, the lack of ball control. Um, you had Robinson who just, um, you know, couldn't catch the ball <laughs> to save his life. Uh, there was a few catches that could have really helped the Ravens move the ball down the field. 
excuse me. Uh, but, you know, he, he just he couldn't catch the ball. He, the, you know, ball security for the Ravens was just at a fault. Uh, Brown, you know, ended up losing the ball, uh, which the bank, you know, in the end zone at which the Bengals ended up uh, recovering and scoring that touchdown. Uh, Watkins, uh, a deep, you know, drive. He caught a 10 yard pass, ran it for another 20, ends up fumbling the ball on the way down. Those are going to be the simple errors that the Ravens are going to have to fix heading into next week, this week, heading into the wild card series. But, you know, you also have to um, think about it this way. And this was one thing I was thinking about um, at the end, towards the end of the game, is that Lamar Jackson, you know, and this is something that Baltimore has been playing ever since Lamar Jackson got hurt. Um, you know, Brown Jr. is two and three um, since. Cover, you know, replacing Lamar Jackson because of his injury. But one thing that uh, the Bengals have to realize, and that I get, I get even myself a little worried uh, heading into, is that we don't know the status of Lamar Jackson. We really don't know if he's going to be out here next week and playing in the wild card series. You think that maybe he was, you know, getting better. But maybe he's not at the point where he's a hundred percent. And knowing that you're going to be in the postseason, I would rather have a I rather have an eighty percent Lamar Jackson in the wild card than a sixty percent, you know, Jackson, you know, Lamar Jackson in week eight. Even though there's, you know, knowing that there's nothing at stake, so there, you know, maybe there's some strategic game plan that the Ravens are looking into. Um, you know, looking into this game, game yesterday, I don't know how much of the game plan is also shown was shown on the field. If that was Baltimore's intentions and game plans, I mean, they ran through their timeouts right away. Um, my thing is about some of the, about like this type of scenario, and we saw this a couple years ago with Pittsburgh and Cleveland. Is that okay? Round one is good, all right? Bengals win round, round one, and we've sealed that faith. Now we jump into round two, which is the with, which matters the most, and that's going to be at Paycor Stadium on Saturday night in the wild card series. We don't know. one. The one thing that we don't know is the status of Lamar Jackson. He could be ready. He could not. And we probably won't know that until Thursday or Friday, you know, as late as possible, right? If he's ready to play. I don't think the Bengals may, you know, they're going to have to be prepared. I don't think the Bengals are quite prepared for. Also, I don't think that we know everything to see out of, you know, we haven't seen everything that the Baltimore Ravens have to offer after week 18. So I'm afraid, you know, there's, there's, here's are just concerns heading into the wildcard weekend. Okay. And this is probably going to be reliterated week at, you know, day after day until the game is I, I'm sitting at the edge of my seat because there, there may be things that the Bengals won't be ready for. Sunday's game, even though the Bengals won, they're the team who probably suffered the most loss. They played their, they played their starters up until a certain point. Now, you know, yeah, let's given they had a little bit more to fight to, and there's not a large roster, and a play, you know, starters are going to have to start, but they were more obligated to start their st- starters than to rest their starters, getting themselves ready for the wild card weekend. I would like to see Joe Burrow sit out for the fourth quarter. I would like to see Joe Mixon not being relied on. You know, you know, we had a couple injuries. Alice, you know, Kappa, uh, you know, got injured. Kara's got injured. And those are going to be key elements into how to, you know, signify a victory in the wild card weekend next week. So my other thing, um, you know, so there's a lot of things that kind of unfold injuries, um, the way that they played, uh, if starters, you know, when the Ravens do have their starters, how dangerous they are. But, you know, at the end of the day, there was just a lot of, and plenty of mistakes that the Ravens made, you know, and giving the reason why the Bengals picked up the victory last week, you know, yesterday. I think as a fan, all right, I said this, you know, coming back from break, that we have to just take a step back, breathe, smell the roses, and kind of enjoy 
for the first time in a while, if not at all. I don't quite know, but the Bengals have won back-to-back titles. Right? They're heading to the playoffs again. And, you know, it's kind of sensory. You know, I, I was kind of saying this throughout the years. It was kind of frustrating to me. I don't want the Bengals to head into the postseason, head over heels, you know, into the 2022 season. That's postseason, but 2022 season, you know, too big for their bridges in that standpoint. I wanted them to kind of take a step back, realize, hey, this is what we need to do. We went this close. We're this close to the playoffs, to the Super Bowl championship, you know, last year. We were this close. We were excited. Don't let that get to the best of us because you see the Los Angeles Rams. And now, you know, you get the second opportunity and yeah, things are banged up. You have really had to fight yourself through in a season that kind of should have been a little bit more uh, of a, all right, let's, let's kind of walk through the park. You know, you, there's games that obviously we know the Bengals should have won, especially early on. You know, they, they should have won the Steelers game. They, you know, they should have won the Cowboys game. Um, and starting the season off four and four was kind of, you know, on the edge of your seat because you didn't know what was going to be given for the remainder of the season. You know, all right, four, four and four, I'm thinking, all right, well, we have a wild card spot if we can get our heads out of our asses. And we did. Um, so, you know, let's enjoy and celebrate what we do have to offer. And let's go ahead and now set, set our size set our focus in for the Ravens next week. It's concerning to have the Ravens um, as, you know, playing back to back against the Ravens because they are the second best team right now in the AFC North. They are division rivalries, you know, just like the, just like the dolphins and the bills. We'll talk about that game coming back from break, but just like that game, division rivalries, fun games, but as a, as a, as a fan, terrifying it's going to be very um until and i don't want the Bengals to lose but i until they lose in the playoffs it's going to be such a terrifying feeling it's going to be just it's going to be you know nail biting uh, you know on your edge of your seat the entire time um to figure until at least until after this week when we figure out the Bengals' next opponents all right let's step aside Talked enough about Bengals and Ravens. We'll have plenty more to talk about that heading into uh, the postseason and as the week to come. I want to get into the AFC and the NFC and break down everything that has acquired, uh, transpired over um, the last 24, 48 hours in the NFL. Uh, Some new faces as the Dolphins checked out, uh, you know, checked in as the back end. As the um, as the Patriots lost to the Bills in a very epic game that we were following during the Bengals Raven game, and Seattle, you know, they held on um, thanks to the Detroit Lions losing, so they got the chance to. They're getting the chance this weekend to go to the Wild Card Series. So don't go nowhere. The TNC Sports, uh, the throwing on the TNC Sports Talk YouTube channel continues. Uh, right after this break. Already, you know, a little bit of a cleanup and stuff like that when it happens, getting coming back from break. 6.43, 
taking you guys up until eight o'clock here on the Monday morning. Thank you guys for tuning in. Welcome back to the throw in here on the TNC Sports Talk YouTube channel. All right. So make sure we have everything up. There we go. Come back from break. I deal with a couple of things during break. I had to come back and kind of clean up some stuff um, for you guys in this next coming up second. I hate, you know what the playoffs are here, you guys. I am um, you know, all the stress that you deal with when it comes down to the playoffs and you, you know, bring it, um, you uh, getting to the playoffs, all the scenarios and, you know, heading into this week, right? Heading into this weekend, everything started off on Saturday, right? Kansas City had a chance to clinch the number one seed because that was up for grabs. And there was just so many different scenarios that could have been in place. And, you know, back on Friday, NFL came out midday and said, all right, here's all the scenario pitchers. You know, one, two, and three. And the outcomes of every game. This is where they're going to be played at. And, and so, you know, and I'm not going to sit here and try to make sense to that. You know, I was looking at it, the other, you know, the other day. And, and I was like, all right, you know what I'm going to do? Is that I'm going to look at this on Monday morning. Figure out exactly how this was going to play out. And then go from there. So here was, here was a chart. I actually had this chart. It's the 2022 AFC Championship game, neutral, uh, you know, game, neutral site scenarios. So basically because the Bills did not get an opportunity to play this game, it was a scenario basis. And the way that this kind of unfolds is, you know, I'm just going to give you the outcome. I'm not going to read you every scenario. I'm not going to show you every scenario. I'm just going to read you the outcome according to the NFL. The Chiefs, the Bills, and the Bengals did win their games over the weekend, which means Kansas City's number one, Buffalo's number two, Cincinnati's number three. And that's going to be the second line in the category. I'm sure you can look this up on the NFL website, which means that if Buffalo and Kansas City will play each other in the AFC championship game, all right, in a couple of weeks, then it will be at a neutral site. It will be at a site that neither Buffalo or Kansas City will have home field advantage of. Now, it depends how many fans from either team, and you know, as well as I know, but, you know, fans among these three teams, especially the Bills and Chiefs, fan base is strong, and they'll travel. If the Cincinnati Bengals make it and face the Kansas City Chiefs, then it's going to be at Kansas City. The third option is if the Bills and the Bengals make it to the championship game, which is a possibility, then you can see that happening at the home field advantage. So that's, you know, that's just the, you know, the long version, you know, wind it down into one. Okay, coming into this past weekend, scenario pitchers. Here's the what the playoff pitcher looks like currently. All right, and this is the finalized. There's nothing else changing, no other negotiation. But coming into the weekend, Kansas City Chiefs won their division. You know, won the first seed. Ah, microphone issue. Trying to just adjust this so I can see both of my screen, my paperwork, and the camera. Um, but coming into the game. But coming into the weekend, seating needed to be clinched. The AFC South needed to be clinched. And the seventh wildcard spot needed to be clinched. Currently, you know, coming into the weekend, the Pittsburgh, uh, the New England Patriots. Jacksonville played Tennessee back on Saturday night. They won. Like I said, if they lost, they had a slim chance. A slim chance. Under the conditions of all the scenarios unfolding and happening in their effect, that means that the Patriots needed to lose, the Dolphins needed to lose, and the Steelers needed to lose, that they would have slid into the seventh spot of the wild card. 
Well, they didn't have to worry about that because they won on Saturday. We already talked about the Ravens and the Bengals and the outcome of that game and what was on the line for that game. We roll over here to Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh took care of their business against Cleveland, 28-14. to 14. Now, you know, listen, there's a whole nother story to Pittsburgh. That I, I think, you know, I was complexing if we need to talk about it today. You know, there's the, you know there was a controversy um, with, you know, being, you know, a classic Steeler player. Um, you know, whether it was intentional, whether it was towards anyone or not, but they were performing, you know, a CPR celebration at the end of the game when they clinched the game. And it was just, it's not, I don't know. I, I'm just, you know, I had no words. Because out of every team, out of all 30 teams, teams in the NFL, you think that, you know, you expect Pittsburgh to do something like this. All right. That's just how classical they are. Pittsburgh won, though, and they had that hope and that that chance of that postseason alive under the circumstances that a couple of things fell into their hands. We move over to New England and Buffalo, where Buffalo, although it was a tough battle, they come up and they win. They beat New England pa- the Patriots 35-23. to 23. So that keeps Pittsburgh alive. Okay, that knocks out New England for the postseason. Well, Miami, on the other hand, after a close tie game, go on and beat the Jets 11-6 to in the final seconds of the fourth quarter, which ended up replacing New England, and that's why you see Miami instead of Pittsburgh in that seventh spot. So, as you're, so Kansas City has that week one bye. Miami is going to head over to Buffalo. And we'll see a division rivalry, you know, division game there in the wild card weekend. Ravens are going to stay in Cincinnati and face the Bengals for the second consecutive week. You don't see it too often, and you get nervous about it because I know I'm nervous about it. But it is it is exciting to watch and you know see if you know what type of changes these two teams can make. You know, they, you have to make that game call. Right, you have to determine. All right, did what did what work last week? Is that going to work again, or will Baltimore be able to prepare for that and stop us next week? That's it's always the concerning part, you know. I mean, it's just like when in baseball, when you're facing the same team in a month span nine times in thirty games, you face them nine times. You kind of understand how they play the game and who they're going to throw out there. You know, it's why do you think the Dodgers are always so good against the Padres? It's because they play them, you know, 16, 17 times a year. So, and they know how they, they know how to play them. And then you got the Chargers taking on Jacksonville. Now, I mean, I've said this before. I'm always a big fan of seeing new teams, although I don't necessarily think that the, you know, it's kind of still new for me to adjust and accept that Jacksonville's in the playoffs. I think that this is a big opportunity for Trevor Lawrence, and I love the opportunity that Trevor Lawrence is being given. And, you know, it, it, listen, you know, Tennessee moved from 8-4 and four to 8-9. and nine. Think about that. I think that's pretty um, remarkable. And, you know, hopefully, maybe you don't know what we're going to see out of Jacksonville. It's going to be Justin Herbert. It's going to be uh, Trevor Lawrence and the Wild Card Weekend in Jacksonville in front of the home crowd. They live to fight another weekend. Any complaints, any misunderstandings about the playoff pitcher in the AFC? This has been far more entertaining than any other division. And, uh, you know, we saw the best of the best. Like I said, there was two types of games being played yesterday. It was either playing for the playoffs pitcher or playing for the draft. And we'll definitely get into that here in a moment. But I want to cover over the NFC side here. Because Philadelphia, they put themselves in a sticky situation where they had a win or they needed Dallas to lose. 
and they needed San Francisco to lose to clinch the number one seed, although they dominated the NFC all, all the way through. You know, Mike, you know, you look into the NFC, and let, let's be honest, these seven teams I'm not fond of all the way. Every team has had some sort of problem throughout the season that I do not, it, it, when it comes down to picking matchups, I just, I can't pick just one one player, one team. Pitch, uh, Philadelphia clinches number one seed out of yesterday after beating, okay, they had to beat the New York Giants 22-16, or the Cowboys had to lose. Well, yeah, that's in order to clinch number one seed. They had to clinch the division by winning or Dallas losing, which Dallas lost 26-6. Yesterday, San Francisco won their game against Arizona, which was probably expected 28 to 13. And that's how we have the one, two and three seed. Minnesota had got off to a great start. They mellowed out. They fit perfectly in number three. Seattle finished in. And here was the scenario coming into Sunday. Okay, Seattle, in order to make it in, they currently held held the seventh spot. But if the. Green Bay Packers lost, which they did 20 to 16, then they would have came in. Now, if Seattle also lost, Detroit would have been a playoff contender. But, you know, I tell you something about Detroit. The Detroit Lions played as if they were playing a playoff game. They knew that they were hit. They knew hitting into the game, they were out of the playoffs, but they could sabotage the Green Bay Packers and they could sabotage Aaron Rodgers and now we sit here and wonder what the status is for Aaron Rodgers moving forward. You know, it's been a fun week, weekend. It's been a fun season. It's been a messy season. I can't quite tell you where I believe that the season, you know, whether the season was good or it was great. Overall, you know, we're down here now to 14 teams that have a chance at the Super Bowl. And if you ask me today, among the 14 teams, who I feel the most comfortable with, I, I can't just give you a one because Kansas City knows how to play football in January. Buffalo knows how to play football in January. Cincinnati now knows how to play both uh, football in January. Tampa Bay, Dallas, San Francisco knows how to play football in Jan you know, January. But it's will they play football in January because they have to be able to overcome everything that you know has happened over the year you know the year injuries you know problems ins and outs so nfl week number 18 is past us the nfl season has come and gone we are getting ready for the new year or in the playoff time as well as new year you know i think you know taken away the NF, you know, out of week 18, everything that has unfolded and unwinded. You know, Mike Tomlin, Pittsburgh gets to avoid a losing season. I think that is a very keen note that we would be talking in the weeks to come. You know, although you don't make it to the postseason, to avoid a losing season, you know, after you're on the edge of your seat because you had to win out. I think that just says I need something else for Mike Tomlin. Well, we're at the end of hour number one. And here, here's what I want to make when we come back. I want to address a couple of things because although the <laughs> although we're talking about postseason football, right? Uh, here coming up next week, you know, we have to pay attention to what's happening on the other side of the club. All those, the remainder of the teams that did not make it to the pay playoffs. A matter of fact, there are teams that are now focusing on the NFL draft and it's time. You usually, this is like a black Friday when it comes down to the NFL, a lot of coaches, a lot of players will be released, will be traded. Uh, we're starting to talk about into get into that. And although, you know, Cincinnati's in it. That's great. We'll get ready for the game coming up Friday. I think it's also due note to highlight, you know, what's the status of um, Aaron Rodgers? Will he return? If so, will he be in a different uniform next year? 
Uh, what are some coaches' problems? Because Denver needs some solutions. I know um, they, they, I mean, listen, they need some help. Houston needs some help. They need some help, especially half after, after what happened back on on um, yesterday. Man, you giving up the the number one pick of the NFL draft. I I just, you know, win draft. You think you'd play smart. You know, I, I'm not a big fan of that, but we'll talk more about that coming up next. Our number two here on the throw in on the TNC Sports Talk YouTube channel coming up next. Thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, stay tuned. To the bank, like, ha, 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 ha. Ooh, go, go. Left it to the bank, like, ha, 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 ha. Ooh, yeah. I got Our number two of the throw in here given to you. I want to give a shout out to Spreaker, who is providing all of our audio streaming platforms. You guys can listen and check us out on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Spreaker, and so much more. Anywhere you get your audio platforms, download us on the throw-in right there, and don't miss a single episode. Try my best to upload an episode each and every day. Hour number two here of the throw-in, and we're just getting continuing. Uh, you know, playoffs right now, wild card weekends, as we are in focus, the games are already in place. Now, you know, I'll go ahead and post more. We'll talk about this more heavily, obviously, throughout the week. I mean, it's um, something that, uh, you know, we pay attention to. Um, but, hey, uh, this is how it's going to kind of start going down. They already had the games and the times announced. Seahawks and then 49ers will do battle. Division rivalries, I like that, you know, over there in the NFC side. They'll play at 4.30 on a Saturday. Um, and then we will take on also the Sunday night game or Saturday night game with the Chargers over in Jacksonville. Now, you know, and then heading into Sunday, um, you have a triple header there. First kicking off at 1 p.m. with the AFC. You had the Dolphins and the Bills followed by the Giants and the Vikings. And then at 8.15 back in the AFC, we will have the Ravens and the Bengals. So that will be your AFC um, finish up. And then on Monday, we'll finish things up against the Cowboys and Buccaneers on the 16th. So it, over three days, six games, wild card weekend implications. Um, I like. I, th I think I like the fair party here with everything that's going on. You know, one thing that we will know for sure by Sunday night, right? Because you got the six and three. What we will know by Sunday at four o'clock is the AFC, if the Bills advance, if they're going to have home, you know, the two teams, the two next teams are going to head on over to, um, you know, Kansas City and Buffalo. Or if, and then we will also know by, honestly, we should know by Saturday a little bit more idea, the better idea for um, Seattle and San Francisco. We, we could go speculate how all this is going to play down. Obviously, it's the higher seeds play each other while the lower seed goes over to the 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 team that with the, with the bye. So um, now... What we're going to try to attempt to do is make is a uh, call some games. You know, that's one thing that we did during the playoffs last year, uh, you know, was coming on here and calling some games, talking about some football. Um, we were excited about that. We had a lot of fun. It was a blast. Uh, I want to try to do it. I'm thinking right now um, in front of you guys, the Saturday 430 game, Seahawks and 49ers and then Dolphins and Bills. Um, on Sunday, so those are the two teams and two games I'm thinking about wanting to try to provide you guys coverage. Um, but we'll see. Um, hopefully, I'll have some more. I'm I am I'm gonna need a confirmation later on this week. So, uh, hopefully, stick around Tuesday, maybe Wednesday, a confirmation about exactly what games if we're gonna cover any games. You know, one thing you know. 
I, I mentioned all the way through today, the last couple of weeks, there's two type of teams. There are teams that are looking to play the playoffs, looking to get into the playoffs. And then there's teams that are looking to rebuild, reset, possibly ruin a playoff opportunity. Okay. There was a lot of teams out there that didn't necessarily play good football and they were out eliminated early on. You think of the Rams, you think of the Colts, think of the Texans, um, the Bears, um, you know, the Cardinals, the Raiders, <coughs> the Broncos on a handful of sides. Um you know, and although, you know, we have wild cards looking ahead, this is also the time to start focusing in on what in, in teams need to do this off season to help themselves out. Um, and let yesterday, you know, a prime example of things just going wrong is that the Houston Texans had the opportunity to clinch the, you know, had the number one draft pick in the NFL. I don't know what they're looking for. You know, hey, the only th reason, the only thing I think of when it comes down to Houston losing or beating, Houston beating Indianapolis 32-31 is to get the second round. You save some money in that draft. You don't get, you, you may not get the player you want, but at least you save some money and having to spend them, you know, so. um yeah, yesterday Houston hands the number one draft pick over to the Chicago Bears. Uh, obviously, trades, deals, whatever the case may be, may be in place. But that's the only thing I can think of is that, you know, I know that number one of the draft pick gets paid high. And as you work down the charts, you get less and less. So maybe they're not looking for anyone in particular and they want to save some money. But, you know, this is also where, um, you know, listen. Love, uh, Lovey Smith, the head coach for the Houston Texans, where he was uh, let go, um, yesterday or it was immediately after the game. Obviously, it wasn't a good season. I don't think anyone expected Houston to have a good season, anyways. But, uh, you know, this is a time where head coach. You know, we we thought we saw Nathaniel Hackett a couple weeks ago. We're gonna see more uh, releases. Uh, as coaching, you know, they're gonna get on that jump start. I don't know how many. Players will be traded right now. I don't think, you know, very slim to none. Um, but right now it's going to be all about the coaches and cleaning house and trying to get yourself a better team and a better squad uh, for next season. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of questions out there. You know, we, in the coaching staff alone, you know, we, you know, a couple of interesting things pointed out last week. You know, we had, you know, the return, you know, of Jim Hallball, who's been coaching down in Michigan. He says, hey, listen, anything's possible. Never say never. You know, I'm open to anything. You know, I don't know the details and the ins and outs of Jim, you know, Hallball and moving, coming back to the NFL. I know I really liked him. You know, I'm a fan of him, although, you know, there are some, you know, discrepancy over you know his coaching style and the things that he do does on and off the field i don't know i'm, I'm not going to get into detail about that but i mean it's not my place to in, in that sense he wins he, he wins football games let me put it that way he's been running michigan for uh several years now he's been winning football games taking them to championship games he's been taking them to the college playoff uh, college football playoffs and, you know, he had success with the 49ers also taking them to a Super Bowl. And if anyone probably deserves another coaching chance at the major, at the, you know, at the NFL level, Jim Hallmark deserves that chance. Would you, would he not? You know, there's teams out there, Carolina, New Orleans, um, especially now since the conversation of Sean McVay, or not Sean McVay, but, um, Sean Payton, it could possibly go into to be Denver. Denver needs a head coach. They need, there's a lot of solutions that Denver needs to look into and address. Is Russell Wilson worth the investment that is being made? I think that's a bit, very big, important question. You know, um, you know, I know we talked last week about Derek Carr over in Las Vegas. Is he the, is he the future quarterback? I mean, and then that's the other thing. All right, as you start picking out your quarterback, you know, let's say they, you know, the Broncos, for example, and I'll just 
use them as an example. They don't have a head coach. They are seeking a head coach. Everything that is transpired this year with Russell Wilson, I think the Broncos need to decide that are we going to give Russell Wilson another opportunity? We already knew, listen, he was walking into a very tough division knowing that you're going to have to go up against Derek Carr, Justin Herbert, Patrick Holmes. Now, I'm not saying that Wilson is incapable of competing against these great quarterbacks, but there was, you know, he hasn't been, he's had to have, I mean, he hasn't had a really good year you know, since, you know, since he's gotten hurt. Now, th that's not the fault of anyone individually. You know, maybe new fresh, new environment, new hopes. You know, they didn't make the playoffs last season. But then it's maybe, I mean, for me, it kind of hurts when you see Seattle, on the other hand, making it to the playoffs, the team that you just got done leaving, and you're over here in Denver, and you're having your your you know, your controversy between the players and the coach, and you don't you don't know what you're going what's going on. So is 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 the problem Russell Wilson or is the problem the coaching staff? And it as of right now, Seattle looks like they made the better move. They're sitting here fighting for another day. Denver's going home. They they knew they were going home about a month ago. You know, they figured that out back at Thanksgiving. So you talk about some problems and some coaching staff there, you know, you're going to see coaches being fired and hired. You got quarterback scenarios. Let's not forget about there are players that just may not be returning. I know this is an every week scenario, but Green Bay got knocked out of the playoffs thanks to the Detroit Lions last week, yesterday. You know, and, you know, I was skeptic to see how Things, games were being played, you know, by Aaron Rodgers and how he was going to handle the new team, how he was going to handle not having uh, five-star receivers and a great block protector, protection in the offensive line. But every year you do always throw the question, you know, these are the greats, Aaron Rodgers and Tom Brady, and every year they throw out the whole, am I going to retire, and we have to sit on edge. You know, I, I could I could make a case on why both men should retire this year, and I can make a case on why they shouldn't retire this year. I am not. <clears throat> let, me, let me put it this way. I don't want to make the statement, although it's, it is a coverage standpoint. I hope that, you know. I hope honestly that you know Aaron Rodgers, Tom Brady before they go out and say anything they have the opportunity to to reflect and to see what they exactly want to do. If that means that they don't retire until August or until the first day of the season because they know they don't want to play or if that means that they sit out a season because you know that they could bounce back then I would recommend doing that. That's in my opinion. Um but yeah, there's some questions you know, and if if Aaron Rodgers decides, hey, we're we are gonna you know stay, I'm gonna play for another season or two or three, which he could possibly do so. At what point, you know, can he, you know, what team is he gonna go? Is he gonna stick with the Packers or will he go to other teams like San Francisco or even Las Vegas, who are looking for quarterbacks? A lot of questions in the offseason. All right. We are getting ready for some college football national playoffs, national championships that begin or take place tonight in Los Angeles um, at SoFi Stadium. And uh, they're getting all ready. They're all excited for the football playoffs finals. And we'll talk a little bit about that, getting ready for TCU in Georgia. Our number two continues heading up yourself up until 8 a.m. here on the TNC Sports Talk YouTube channel. Sé lo que quiero, verme abajo, pero no puedo. Yeah, yeah. Nunca confunda la mola, plata y las mujeres. Y yo lo fago, y los placeres. Por eso estoy bien bien acá como antes. All righty, welcome back here to the throne right here on the TNC Sports Talk YouTube channel. 
And we got a lot more coming your way as we do a rapid quick fire as we cover the sports in Cincinnati because football wasn't the only sport that was being played over the weekend in Cincinnati. We're going to kick things off in the NCAA basketball, NCAA men's basketball with the Cincinnati Bearcats who ended up losing to Houston last yesterday, 72 to 59. Uh, they moved to eleven and six, two and two in the conference, um, and they were getting ready to play again to take on East Carolina on the eleventh later on this week on uh, Wednesday. Uh, they they will be at home. Cincinnati is nine and two at home. Uh, they'll be going up against East Carolina, who's ten and seven, one and three in conference, and they are one and three on the road with a two game losing streak. That game starts at 9 p.m. Jumping over to other games that's happening. Ohio State Buckeyes. uh, They played Miracle in Maryland yesterday, losing 80 to 73. That moves them to 10 and 5, 2 and 2 against conference with a two game losing streak. Man, Ohio State will be playing uh, Thursday against Minnesota, 6 30 tip off. Well, they will be facing Minnesota, who is 6 and 8. They're 0 and 4 in conference, 0 and 3 on the road with a two game losing streak. Kentucky Wildcats picked up the victory back on Saturday against LSU 74 71. Very close game. Kentucky Wildcats 10 and 5, 1 and 2 on the, in the conference section, losing one. They're 9 and 0, 9 and 0 at home. They'll be facing tomorrow against South Carolina at 7 p.m. There's the South Carolina 7 and 8. Who is uh, haven't played a conference game yet? They're one and three on the road with like a two game losing streak. Uh, over there, over down south, the Louisville Cardinals. All right, they also played uh, face Wake Forest at on Saturday. They lost 80 to 72. That brings their record of the season to two and 14. They're 0 and 5 uh, in conference when losing the last five games. They'll be on the road. Uh, they're 0 and 3 on the road, and they'll be on the road on Wednesday at Clemson, 13 and 3, uh, who is undefeated at home, and they're undefeated in their conference. That tip off will be at 9 p.m. Also, some hockey Cincinnati Cyclones this weekend uh, played both Saturday and Sunday. They lost to the Nailers on throwback third on a throwback uh, Saturday night against the Nailers, three to two. They headed on the road and faced the Wallies, or the Walleyes, um, back yesterday. They won six to four. Coming up next, they will be playing the Walleyes again on the eleventh Wednesday at six, uh, puck drops at seven thirty right here at the Heritage Bank Arena. Take is still available. It's a T-shirt giveaway night plus two dollar beers. So if you guys are looking to catch a uh, hockey game coming um, locally, check out. Um, Tickets are still available. Want to check them out? All right. On uh, quick um, coverage update here in the world of sports, as we get ready for some college football playoffs, national championship game number three, TCU taking on number one Georgia tonight, seven thirty p.m. Eastern time at SoFi Stadium in Los Angeles. It's going to be available on ESPN and Fub. Uh, fubu tv um listen they both teams you know against their opponents in the semifinals last weekend uh set the tone for what tonight it's going to be uh very it's going to be a very big night in college football playoffs it's going to be the run game versus the pass game um and you know there is a chance all right that NFL that the CNCAA football may have just messed up. All right. Obviously the underdog in these scenarios are going to get a lot of um, support and there is a chance. You know, it's gonna, they're going to rely um, all I could tell you is going to be some big plays and they're going to rely on the big plays that come down to determining who's going to win this game. Now, listen, Georgia, it's kind of hard to vote and to play against Georgia or to root against Georgia. And, you know, I'm I'm even going to go out there and just say and play safe. I'm going to pick Georgia to win. But just imagine 
what this is going to do for NCAA football if TCU can knock off number one Georgia and win the championship. It's happened very few where the underdog teams come through and actually can win the college football playoffs national championship. You know, you're talking about things like, you know, I don't know even the best way to put it. In the last couple of years, college football has decided, although, you know, yeah, they're working on expanding the playoffs and they will be expanding the playoffs, which I think is going to, I think it's good for school. I think it's school, good for the school programs. And I think it's good for the publicity. I think it's good for the conferences. It gives teams more to fight for. It gives more teams in the, in the playing in December than, you know, than just the bowl games. And college football playoffs, national championship tournament, you know, is a global thing. Everyone watches, everyone tunes in. And each and every year, you always hear about Ohio State, Georgia, Alabama, Clemson, LSU, Michigan. And you don't quite hear some of these, you know, you know, these not not knockoff teams, but these teams that don't quite make it, that don't have the most money to spend or the investment that they have to recruit staff. You're talking about teams like TS, you know, TCU, Cincinnati, Florida. They're, they've dropped out of the conversation each and every year. Um, UCLA, Cal State, USC. And so, you know, every once in a while, last couple of years, I've seen them throw a, you know, underdog team in there, a team that, you know, just to appease the NCAA fans, right? This though, when TCU, they had a good season. Why not? I don't know why they're in the top 25, no less top four, but they just jump on in. Let's throw them into the mix. Let's make them top four. Let's make make them have the, uh, you know, give them an opportunity. And they're laughing because they know deep down that even if they can make it to the championship, that nine out of ten times they're going to lose. But what happens if, you know, Cincinnati went last week, you know, last year, thought it was a big, big deal. It was a big deal because you got the Cincinnati Bearcat fans hoping that they could win. And it just turned out to be a joke. Obviously, Football, college football can be a very good thing or a very sloppy thing. And last year was a very sloppy thing. This year, on the other hand, TCU actually gave a fighting chance to Michigan. And I guess, you know, you know, last year was a perfect example of why you don't want to extend the playoffs. You don't want to give these teams the opportunity because now they're you know, because if you don't want to have a 51 nothing shutout game. But coming into this season, I mean, TCU gave Michigan a run for their money. And I, I wouldn't I wouldn't think anywhere else to see TCU giving Georgia at least a run for their money. And I'm talking about as good as a game as Ohio State is. I don't think Georgia is going to come in and blow out TCU. I, I don't think that's going to happen. I may be completely wrong. I will laugh at myself, you know, <laughs> you know, tomorrow morning if it's if it's a 43-6 game. But TCU showed something last week that they wanted to play football. TC, TCU didn't just beat Michigan to advance to this tonight's game, which is a big primetime game. There's no NFL, I right? foot, you know, NBA and NHL is for me, out the window when it comes down to this game alone. NCAA basketball is out the window when it comes to this game alone. This is the game that you pay attention to. And this, just imagine, let's close, close your eyes for just a second and imagine to seeing TCU at the end of the night, the purple and the silver fall down from the sky at SoFi Stadium. Because TCU has won the college football playoffs national championship. They beat Georgia. They beat Georgia, the number one team 
in the NFL, or in the NFL, NCAA, sorry, I go back and forth all the time. In NCAA, the number one team, the team that said no one was going to beat them. Okay, the team that was better than Alabama. And yeah, that's shocking to see that a team's better than Alabama this year. Just imagine that for a second. Picture, picture, all that. I'm going to play it safe. I'm going with Georgia. It's going to be a fun game. I know I'm going to watch it between that and Monday Night Raw. There's a lot of things coming your way uh, tonight. So a lot of football, a lot more. And, you know, listen, I think that they have a standard to meet tonight between these two teams after the way they played on New Year's Eve. So we'll get a chance to see them play tonight. I hope it's a better, bigger and better game. I don't think it's going to disappoint. It's kind of like, I don't think it, I don't want it to disappoint. There's that slim chance, <laughs> of course. But TCU, Georgia, number three, number one national championship game tonight, 7.30, available on ESPN. All right, let's step aside and let's come back and let's talk about some more. Let's change our subjects to wrestling. Monday Night Raw is tonight. We are creeping up against the Royal Rumble. And as much as we want to talk about WWE, as much as we want to talk about professional wrestling, which we do, I think there is something bigger that can ultimately change the impact of professional wrestling and impact of the WWE in Pacific. If you guys had not had um, heard the news coming out last week, we'll feel you feel you go out guys in uh, coming up here when we come back. Thank you guys for tuning into the throwing on the TNC Sports Talk YouTube channel. Don't go nowhere. We'll take a break. Come right back. Talk more coverage. Heading leading you guys up to eight o'clock here on the program. We'll step aside. All righty, welcome back. Some college football playoffs tonight. Monday Night Raw. We are leading to the Royal Rumble this month, at the end of this month. NFL playoffs begin this weekend. Six games among three days. We got ourselves something exciting, getting you guys ready for some more, some incredible action. You know, NFL playoffs never seem to quite disappoint. And, uh, you know, it's turning out to be the turn of events. Like I said, the AFC, you got the Kansas City Chiefs, Buffalo Bills, Bengals, Jacksonville, Miami, Baltimore, Los Angeles. And then you got Seattle, Philadelphia, Giants, Cowboys, 49ers, Vikings, Tampa Bay. And, um, you know, listen, when it comes down to the playoffs, the last 18 weeks of the NFL season goes out the window. Who cares? These are teams that made the playoffs. The seedings have already been made. Now it's time kind of to put up or shut up. It's a win or go home scenario. And, um, you know, we can worry about everything that's going to happen in the off season, in the off season. You know, there's a lot of questions out there, and I'm sure we'll have plenty of time discussing it, talking about it, giving our take and what we believe. Monday Night Raw, though, is coming our way tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern. But, you know, and, you know, we are leading into the Royal Rumble, and there's already been a few matches besides the men's and women's Royal Rumble match um, that is scheduled annually. Now, we also are looking into uh, L.A. Knight and Bray Wyatt, which was announced last week. And then last weekend, Kevin Owens officially challenges yet again Roman Reigns for the Universal Championship. And for, you know, and I have my plenty of take and I'll have fair chance to give you my opinions on that. But my biggest thing coming out of 
the WWE this past Friday was something that happened Friday throughout the day with Vince McMahon. You know, Vince McMahon, um, he would, you know, the announcement is Vince McMahon returns. Um, Vince McMahon's return should help a sell process go smoothly through there could still be hiccups. All right. Vince McMahon rejoins the WWE's board Friday and to begin a potential sell process for his company. The 77 year old, the C, the former CEO and the chair man of WWE is a 77 year old and the former 77 year. Yeah. If I could say this correctly, I apologize. A former 77 year old CEO and chairman and the controlling shareholder of WWE, he stepped down after investigations found that he had made, paid nearly $15 million to four women over 16 years to quell claims of allegated sexual misconduct and infidelity. Returning to the board will give potential buyers confidence he's supportive of the details of any transactions. He uh, makes a statement on Friday. Uh, and I quote, my return will allow the WWE as well as any transactions com uh, counterparties to engage in these processes, knowing that knowing they will have the support of the controlling shareholder. McMahon said in a statement back on Thursday, McMahon uh, return doesn't affect current leadership. McMahon's daughter, Stephanie, and former CAA agent Nick Khan are co-CEOs but it remains unclear what type of role, if any, McMahon would want the, at WWE if they sold if they sold the company. Um, so basically, we're at this point. Um, you know, we're I'm reading this article, and it's just like, all right, so we're basically at this point where everything that transpired last year, it's time to move forward. And Vince McMahon, he he has a large amount of the shareholding, so he does have a very huge say in what is going to happen with the company. The problem that we're seeing, and I, from my understanding, and this is what I'm reading, it looks like at some point the WWE and everyone that's on that's a part of the board and everything right now is at some point ready to say, all right, who is going to eventually take over the company and own the company after this is all said and done? And what the WWE has now done is have shareholders and, you know, to help oversee and make sure that the company is being treated the way they did. And what Vince McMahon has put himself, what he did is that because he was stepping down, he's, made, he's gotten himself as a main shareholder. He's invested into it. And therefore, he has to basically, he's going to continue to approve the process of whatever the future is for the WWE, whether that is that they're going to re management, you know, re manage it upstairs. And, you know, let me just, you know, hand it off to the next person. Or if they're like, all right, let me give it into a bigger industry that I know will be able to financially support. Now, th there, there's a lot of concern for that. Obviously, WWE talent was not told. That was something that was told talked about over the weekend about this uh, decision and this question. And, you know, in all honesty, I've seen companies that are non-wrestling companies, non-wrestling ownership step into wrestling companies and it's that wrestling company has never been the same again for the better or for worse it doesn't matter they has not been the same again wwe has also hired jp morgan to advise the sale according to sources now you know we knew that this was going to come all right i, I really doubt to see vince mcmahon you know, hand it down to Stephanie McMahon, hand it down to Shane McMahon. I wouldn't necessarily see them return, you know, be able to uphold the WWE the way that Vince did. All right? There's a lot of dedication, a lot of pride, a lot of, you know, self-discipline 
that requires you to run a company like the WWE, especially how involved Vince McMahon is. And I don't think no single man can be that much involved for that long period of time as Vince McMahon was. This is a new era. This is a new time. This was going to eventually happen. So as we look at the potential selling the company, doesn't mean that WWE is going away. Doesn't mean that things are going to, you know, change right away. But there's a chance that things may change closer than not. Uh, but here are a list of buyers I kind of want, you know, that are given. And then after I give you the list of buyers, I want to give you a couple of my opinions of who should and could possibly run the WWE and become the new CEO. Coming off first and foremost is Comcast, which is which owns NBC Universal. It's also the potential to fit as a buyer for WWE's McMahon company. Already has an exclusive streaming deal with Comcast streaming services like Peacock and cable TV dealing with you, NBC Universal USA Network. Comcast has market com, uh, capitalization of more than $160 million, billion dollars and can easily afford the company, especially with the $9 billion slash more check. I just can't imagine someone selling the company just for a flat out check. Um, another another uh, company is Fox. WWE is given a, a significantly smaller balance sheet and uh, 17 point bill um, to Fox. Um, Disney's always been in the conversation there. Uh, WWE fits Disney in the same ways that it fits Comcast. It would bolster Disney streaming uh, ambitions, perhaps ESPN Plus. It would support the linear network business. It would add some heft to merchandises and theme park business. Um, <laughs> imagine going to, uh, just imagine going to Disneyland and you see the WWE ride. That, <laughs> that to me is a little funny, but you know, listen, I mean, you know, what I, what I could see is that, you know, Impact does this, and I know that uh, they do this at Full Sail University, but uh, uh, NXT, you know, they could have wrestling promotions. You could have talent there, uh, continue promoting your product there. A uh, Warner Bros. Uh, Discovery um, is also looking into a potential buyer. Netflix is a potential buyer. Amazon is also a loop in the... Hoop there. Endeavor Group Holding is another potential buyer of the WWE. Liberty Media is yet another one. Those are the list that has been lit out now. I'm, I'm looking at Liberty Media. I'm looking at Endeavor Group Holding, um, Amazon, Netflix. Come on. I I'm going to be laughing joke there. Um, one, this is probably a, a difficult topic to talk about because growing up and even you know and there are plenty of other guys growing up that has had this conversation you know has had grew up with WWE has grew up under the McMahon's owning and have you know full range and this is the first time that we it's really out there you know like I said we understand that at some point the WWE needs to potentially think about what's best for business. Um, and, you know, Triple H, you know, in his health and his family, obviously, you know, has done great with creative control since taking over. Um, and, you know, I've asked this, you know, how long is this going to last? I, when I look at companies thinking of buying, the things, uh, the companies that really gravitate to my attention right off the bat is Disney and Fox. Those are the two major companies that I think would be the highest bidder, would be the more logical bidder. Because, you know, Disney, I was a skeptic when Disney took over Star Wars, and that's turned out to be a really good show. 
uh, they really expanded Star Wars significantly since get taken, you know, getting the rights to, you know, of, of continuing the program, the, the movies, extending the, the trilogy, making these individual shows among it. I would fear, fear, uh, I would feel that Disney would have at least the right brain cells to continue the program to run a lot, how it's, how his intentions to run. I would also like Fox, you know, Fox is a big network of sports, especially sports. Now, my fear is when you bring in people like Fox and when you bring in people like Comcast is that they don't know quite know what they're doing or how they're doing it. And I don't want the WWE to be taken over and that to business hands that have no idea about the wrestling industry. It's taken Nick Khan time to understand the business aspect of the WWE. You know, there was, you know, I, I firmly believe that if you, you have, there has to be some sort of wrestling category, you know, wrestling expertise in that room each and every time and having that majority say, hearing everyone out, trying to negotiate the and understand each other, but they need to have themselves a actual person who's wrestled, who knows the company, who knows the business, the ins and outs of it in those meetings, in that room, being having a huge part of owning it or else, you know, I've heard this plenty of times. Wrestling cannot be run by businessmen at a table. It is impossible to run a wrestling program. It, you know, it's like you don't, you know, it's like the one thing we get frustrated with football and with baseball, baseball and football can be said when you look at draft day and you look at Moneyball, you know, those two great movies. Okay. You can easily say that baseball and football gets ran at the table. Well, here, here's the deal. The only thing that the football and baseball ownership has control over is providing the money. Then they have these managers. That is their responsibility is to find the talent for these coaching staff to be able to operate them at a championship level. In the WWE, you have the board of directors that has the money. Then you have that creative team that's responsible for bringing in the guys and the girl, females that is cap that can, you know, take you to that level championship level. You know, that's the managers. Then you got the coaching staff in, and uh, you know, the production, you know, uh, triple H, the guys who are standing, you know, in gorilla position that are, you know, taking you guys to that championship level, making sure that everything is on track. Um, I like it, like I mentioned, you know, ESPN, uh, ESPN, not ESPN, Disney, Warner Bros, Fox, even Comcast, it'd probably be my top four selection. Uh, Vince McMahon also has the opportunity of uh, possibly just saying, hey, you know, what can, you know, I don't know if it's the long term for Stephanie McMahon to, you know, or, you know, the McMahon's family to continue holding it. They would like to, I think when they go on to selling the process and they actually sell the company, um, they, they have to have the incentive of, Hey, all right, you guys can have the, the, you know, the, I'm going to support you guys in owning the company, but there has to be certain things in place because, you know, because obviously, you know, one thing that I think, you know, I got to remember, and I think a lot of people got to remember too, is that Vince McMahon has owned this company for, you know, well over, you know, 30 plus years. He's had a significant amount of success since then that I don't think people quite realize that this is, you know, he didn't just build this industry overnight and to quickly come in and change it, you know, it, it's kind of far-fetched. I'm also throwing out, if you're not going to keep it within family, Keep it within a wrestling family. All right. You want to sell it. You want to sell it to Disney. Sell it to Disney. All right. Sell it to ESPN. Sell it to uh, Fox. Sell it to 
you know, Warner Bros. I don't think that the WWE will ever be the same again if you sell it to the company or one of those companies. And I get it. They're going to have the most money invested. You know, I, I, I've thrown out there. We, we, you know, people have speculated and thrown out there. What about, what about a wrestling family? Wrestling dynasty? Isn't doing, you know, isn't, you know, some, you know, Roman Reigns and the bloodline and, you know, The Rock, a family dynasty. They've grown and breathed wrestling. Um, could there be a possible loophole and, you know, last minute, you know, entrance of, all right, let's take over the company that was give that has given us that platform to succeed. If I'm the WWE, I, you know, if I'm Vince McMahon, I, I mean, if I'm the rock, if I'm the Roman Reigns, you know, you're expecting, you know, in the next three to six months, a new company, someone brand new owning, just owning the company. Why not? Why not try to go after it themselves? I know it's probably far fetched. I'm probably not reading something in between the lines of why this can't happen or not even being suggested. And I'm not saying that, you know, hey, bring in the rock, let them buy the company and, you know, move forward. I don't think the rock is going to be anybody who can make a long term objective while he's having so much success what but what you can do is knowing that you have a good head at on your shoulders knowing that you have someone who has a rich history of professional wrestling that runs in the family for decades that he's at the the head at the top of the table right knowing that he's owning it you could at least get the opportunity of, you know, you know, the opportunity of bringing in the right people to continue running the program, how it's needing to be ran. So, you know, nothing's going to happen overnight. Um, and even throughout this process, they, they claim that over the next month that sometime after, the, you know, shortly after WrestleMania, um, this will come to a conclusion. Um, I think that this is a right move. Um, Vince McMahon, you know, it's going to hurt. It's going to hurt not just for the fans, but for Vince McMahon, I'm sure. Um, you know, it's going to probably be feel like where he doesn't want to let go. Um, but overall, you think of longevity of the WWE and the health. This is what's needed. I'm just concerned because if you don't play the cards right, you don't, you know, you don't want to just go for the highest bidder. But if you don't play the cards right, you can... You know, you, the last thing you want to do is turn your um, company over into the wrong hands who are not capable of um, operating in that. Then actually, you know, you see yourself, you know, the company go to wayside in the next couple of years. So we'll see how that unfolds. Monday Night Raw is tonight. Um, still looking forward to Royal Rumble is still on its way as we get closer Nothing really exciting right now to really be on the, hey, we got to watch the Royal Rumble. I'm a little disappointed in that. Yeah, we're going to get a chance to see Bray Wyatt in action. Roman Reigns will be kicking things off, but there's been no word about, um, you know, if there's possible returns and this and that. Man, two hours have come and gone, and we, you know, I'm just, uh, ready to go back to bed. That's probably what I'm <laughs> going to do here um, after we are done uh, with the program. But, um, you know, I had a great weekend. I hope you guys did too. Filled of sports. Uh, you know, a little bit of scare with Roman Reigns yelling at Sami Zayn. I loved it. I, I absolutely loved the scene of Sami Zayn throwing, tossing his popcorn up in the air and just having himself a, a, a ball there. So, um, you, you gotta love Sami Zayn. You know, I, I was hearing this story, um, I was reading this article about what to do with Sami Zayn because at some point you would think between now and WrestleMania that, you know, with how this is going, that Sami Zayn could be the, could be the one in you know, conquering and dethroning Roman Reigns. I, I mean, and that's like unlikely. You know, I know a lot of people are saying Cody Rhodes. Well, Cody Rhodes has himself, you know, looks like he's going to be going after Seth Rollins when he gets, when he gets healthy. Um, so we really don't know Roman Reigns' opponent. Right now he's dealing with a few with Kevin Owens. But 
I, you know, do you really see Sami Zayn beating Roman Reigns? I mean, I wouldn't put that past anybody and past the creative team because that could definitely happen. But I'm also looking at, you know, they, they mentioned that Sami Zayn could also eventually team up and reunite with Kevin Owens and then they can dethrone the Usos because the amount of time that Sami Zayn has been with both Usos, it could be something where the Usos get dethroned by Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens. I don't know. Right now, I think the biggest conversation is, and, and I think this is a good thing and it's a bad thing, we don't quite know the direction that the WWE could take in for WrestleMania and who could be Roman Reigns' big challenge. And I just, all I got to say to that, it has to be big. It has to be a big enough challenge. It has to be big enough deal. And you, you got to make, you know, I don't want to, it shouldn't be Brock Lesnar, it shouldn't be Goldberg, it shouldn't be The Undertaker, it shouldn't be John Cena, it shouldn't be AJ Styles. It needs to be someone brand new, someone we haven't seen in a while, or something that is like, did that really happen? All right, this is the end of our program. We thank you guys for tuning in this morning. We'll be back again tomorrow, 6 to 8. Got a couple of doctor's appointments today. Talk about some more college play, uh, college football playoffs, TCU, Georgia tonight, Monday Night Raw tonight, uh, getting you guys ready for the NFL uh, wildcard weekend tomorrow, uh, this weekend. So a lot to talk about. Thank you guys for tuning in. Hit that like, share, and subscribe button. And be tuned, stay tuned, and uh, tune us in tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. Thank you. Take care.